Mastering Award Tools 32 Degrees of Freedom. Today, we're going to talk about how to use Award Tool, which is a popular award search tool. It's a great tool. I've had a lot of success finding the awards that I'm looking for when I'm looking to travel to Europe or Asia or whatever it may be. I find this tool really useful, particularly for people with a lot of flexibility. And that's what we're going to discuss today, the flexibility of this tool, because that really makes it stand out versus others. Absolutely. Let's take a look. This is Award Tools homepage. And I'm logged in as a user with the pro version of the tool. The, you can also use some of the features we're going to describe with the free version, but um, the power of a word tool, the thing that makes it so special is that the pro, pro users get 32 entry search, which is just phenomenal. Um, free users get four entry search. So that's still good, better than most <laughs> uh, award search tools will let you have for free. But um, 32 is really where things get super interesting. All right, let me show you what it means to have 32 entry search. It's, uh, I like to call it degrees of freedom, which means you can use those 32 entries however you want. For example, Let's say I want to fly from Detroit to Paris. And I am flexible as to exactly when I fly there. I'm going to look at, you know, every day in May. Here I'm going to use my 32 degrees of freedom to look for flying from Detroit to Paris anytime from May 1st to June 1st. And then you could set your other parameters, um, like number of people flying, do you want business class or, or uh, all cabins, uh, you know, economy and all that. Um, you can, if you want to limit to specific programs, but if you don't mess with that, it'll search all the programs that it knows how to search. Um, and then you simply, you know, press the search um, button and go. Okay, then once it's done searching, you can see the list of results underneath. Uh, what I see right away, though, are some multi-stop uh, flights, which maybe you wouldn't want. So you can use the filters here to change things like that, to tell it you only want, for example, one stop or fewer. Um, you might have other things that, that you want to filter by, uh, for example, max taxes, you might want to limit to, you know, who knows what, but um, sometimes you'll see results with very, very high taxes. So you can do use the slider to, to limit to lower taxes. The other thing that's worth paying attention to is the premium cabin percentage, because sometimes what you'll see is even though you're looking for business class, the results might show a flight where you fly regional first class a few hundred miles, and then you fly internationally across the ocean and economy, and that's no good. If you're looking for business class, you want the longer flight to be in business class. So change the premium cabin percentage to a high enough number to eliminate those kind of results. And then once you've done all that, you should have uh, useful results. They'll be sorted... Um, all together. So all 32 days that I looked at are all in this one um, sort. But if, if you want to quickly see day by day, uh, across near the top here, it shows like the cheapest flight that met your param parameters for each day of the month. And you can just kind of look across this way. I want to point out one other thing before you move on from this, because it, it stood out to me that your display looks significantly different than mine. And then I recalled that you can change the way that the display looks down at the bottom. So you might be seeing something that looks a little bit different than what Craig is, uh, where you see the 709 out of 1,733 results. There's a few yep. different display types and it's the same data. It just looks different. So you might find one of the other displays prettier or more user friendly. That's I do really happen to like... Point one of the others because then I can I can't recall which one of the three it is but I like to be able to sort uh, if I if I look at all the cabins to sort by business class cabin or by first class cabin this is the view that I usually use this last yeah, one yeah there you go so yeah this one's really handy to see everything kind of all together um, this view 
I, I like this view too. One thing I'll, I'll mention though is it's less obvious when uh, business class includes mixed cabin, uh, Ah, yes. where, where Good you're flying point. one leg in economy and another leg in business. Um, it's less obvious in this view than the other views, I think. So Good point. um, just, just keep that in mind. But as long as you set your uh, minimum uh, premium percentage, then it should be a, a good one to use for sure. Very good. Okay, so that's one thing you can do with your 32 degrees of freedom. But another thing you could do, let's say, you know, I only want to fly on May 14th, um, then I could use just one degree of freedom there. And maybe there's, maybe I'm willing to fly like anywhere in Europe, I could start listing everywhere in Europe, up to 32 different air, airports um, or airport lo uh, locations, like where Paris and London actually include multiple airports. And I'm not going to actually do that right now. Um, but you get the idea. I could put in up to 32 and do all at once. Or I could put in, um, let's say, three destination airports, and I could say, you know what? I can fly from Detroit, but I can also fly from Chicago, or I could easily get to, you know, Washington, D.C., and I could easily get to New York. So, um, so I put in four times three, that's 12 degrees of freedom. Now I still have more. I could put in um, two, I guess, two dates. to uh, do two times 12, and, and then I'm using 24 degrees of freedom that way. So I could put in the 14th and 15th. And it actually shows me here in the calendar display that I can't do more than two uh, because I've already picked so many um, different uh, airports. Now, if I eliminate one of the airports and now go back to the date display, now I can do up to a three-day range because it automatically figured that out, how many degrees of freedom I have uh, within each of these boxes. Um, so that's just incredibly powerful that you can choose where you want to apply all of these degrees of freedom yourself. That's the exciting thing because there are times when I'm date limited and very agnostic airport wise, I could fly from many different airports or too many different airports. And then there's other times where I'm very wide open on dates, but I have a, a more limited set of airports and I love being able to custom tailor this to each search that I need to do to pick out which of those different types of freedom. It's a lot to me, it's a, a lot more broadly useful than if I could only do up to 30 days of availability on a, on one route, because then I have to keep searching different routes. Okay, well, Detroit to Paris, Detroit to Rome, Detroit to London, Washington, Paris, Washington, London, Washington, Rome, it, being able to put it all together, I find much more useful. Yeah, uh, totally. And, um, you know, when you're doing a difficult search, meaning, meaning like you want to do something like fly to Europe in business class over the summer with multiple people, uh, those awards are hard to get. And having that kind of flexibility makes all the difference in being able to actually find good stuff. So, you know, for in that example, like flying out of Detroit, what I'll frequently do is I might start the search. Um, by looking from Detroit to a bunch of different European uh, airports over you know whatever range I have available to me. I, I don't always have uh, have to go on one specific day, but it's not uncommon to say, you know, over the these five days or whatever, um, I need to go sometime in that time frame. So I'll often start with that, Detroit to many different airports. But then uh, if I don't find good things that way, I'll put in as the starting point all of the different airports that I can get to easily. Mm Like -hmm. I was saying before, Chicago, New York, Washington. Um, these Washington, D.C., that is. <laughs> um, and then um, for coming back, I'll put in, for example, a lot of different European airports to go to Detroit specifically as my first search, um, knowing that once I'm in Europe
maybe I'm in Paris. I'll look at Paris to a bunch of airports in America that I think I could get to easily. And if that still doesn't serve up anything good, then I'll do a wide search of like lots of European airports to lots of US airports to see, do any of those combinations work? That one would be a little bit more unfortunate because I'd hate to do two positioning flights at the end of my trip, but um, that nece that's not necessarily a bad thing because if, if you do it right, it might mean, oh, I get to see another European city that I wasn't actually, didn't have in mind to see, but I'm happy to go spend a few days there before flying home. And that's the kind of thing that, that might come out of that. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this is so useful, particularly for me as a family traveler, because finding four seats can be challenging. And so a lot of times I'm limited to, okay, well, where can I find four seats? And so being able to, to change it up, like Greg just said, is just broadly useful for me on most of my award searches. Yeah.